in urban and highly populated areas. The greatest danger to human life when disaster strikes are the trapping and injuring of individuals through the collapse of buildings, blocked access to food and aid, and injuries occur during the response, evacuation, and aftermath. During these disasters, recovery efforts become extremely difficult because often the infrastructure and basic services are disrupted. Housing, hospitals, schools, and many government buildings may have collapsed, leaving little refuge for individuals impacted by the event or needing immediate medical attention. I remember in 2009, I was just joining the house and moving to Saudi Arabia, flat happened in Jeddah, and within a few hours, we lost many lives. So, if we have a fast reaction to such disaster, it would be really helpful. From my personal experience, I'm, uh, I'm kind of excited to see some of the applications that could be out there for like wildland fires and, and mapping and getting an idea of, of what would be um, kind of on the other side of the horizon that you can't really see from the incident command point. Um, from living in areas that uh, are prone to hurricanes and some of the devastation that comes with that. They're on the ground, their response is typically slow and the relief through these needs are um, hampered by many different types of bottlenecks. Our hope is that with our technology, we can reduce those bottlenecks by providing situational awareness, mapping of damage, of um, delivering um, different types of kits to these groups, and even uh, doing search and rescue with our different types of UAV systems. We propose four phases of drone integration to provide new kinds of services that can be practically and economically implemented to improve disaster relief dramatically. The first phase is to generate an autonomous, full-scale map of the area that's been struck by a disaster. We can do this with our technology because we've been developing it over the last several years here at the university to apply to large cities. So in half an hour, we can scan four kilometers squared area where disaster may have strike. We use our UAVs to fly pre-planned missions in order to capture the disaster-stricken areas. During this phase, we create uh, highly accurate 3D maps in order to identify problematic areas and zones of high risk. During phase two, we essentially establish a drone's airspace. Uh, we do so using ADS-B transponders that allow us to inform the authorities of where the drones are and establish a safe airspace for the drones to operate in. We can also communicate this to the first responders and help them identify through the use of the previously created 3D map. As far as being able to quickly and accurately get uh, a picture of what's going on out there afterwards um, and be able to to pinpoint where the resources can be used best. During phase three, we do a disaster analysis and provide the first responders the information that they need through the GIS server network. To take this information back to the people who need to make the decisions, to, to take this information and deploy resources in the right way, or if we need to order up more resources, uh, we'll very quickly and accurately get a picture of what they need. Phase four is the um, deployment of multiple drones accomplishing different missions. We expect to be at phase four within an hour and a half of arriving on the scene. The last thing that we did in this last month is develop our sensor field distribution unit on one of our copters, and we're communicating directly with several different professors in our university to make these specific to the need for disaster relief. In the Falcon V system, this is a very interesting challenge where actually all of these modes are going from certain distance. And then the challenge in front of these modes is the following. They have to elect a master node, and they have to form a network, and they have to transfer all of the three important uh, information that I just mentioned, which is heat, humidity, and distances. And these are, this data is extremely important because it's going to sense what is the heat and humidity for some certain area versus others. All this data is going to be collected at the master node, and then later on will be transferred or stored in a certain database for further monitoring. If we develop our four phases approach, this will make the drone disaster relief as a trademark in disaster relief in and may it will change the future of the world.